This is Geometry 1-4, Undefined Terms and First Definitions. I kind of call this lesson the introduction to the rules of geometry. And I'm going to start out by reading on page 27 in your textbook, right there at the beginning. And it's going to start talking about the game of t-ball and softball and baseball and the different rules that, are, that correspond to those games. So it starts out, t-ball is a simple form of baseball or softball. Watching a child's first t-ball game, you might notice players running in the wrong direction, throwing to the wrong person, advancing to the wrong base, standing in the wrong place, for a given position, and so on. How do we know these children are wrong? T-ball is played according to a set of rules and regulations. In order to be a good t-ball player, players need to learn the rules and regulations set forth by their league. These rules include bats, bases, and the t-ball. If the rules do not cover all aspects of the game, are ambiguous, or are inconsistent, then knowing the rules would not result in an organized game. The rule book must be sufficient and consistent. That is, the rules must address every possible situation, and the rules must not contradict each other. Baseball, softball, and t-ball have different rules, even though the rules use many of the same terms. They are like the different types of geometry. Learning the rules of a game requires understanding the terms that are used. For instance, in t-ball, what is a base? But accurate definitions are not used in games and sports. Law, economics, science, and labor relations, in addition to mathematics, are some of the fields in which precise definitions are necessary. For example, disputes may occur because individuals do not know or agree on the meanings of overtime or freedom or force. However, it is impossible to define every term. Some terms need to be left undefined. In previous lessons, you have seen the word point used in many contexts. A point may be a dot, a location, an ordered pair, or a node in a network. This can cause confusion. Imagine a t-ball game in which everyone was interpreting the rules differently. Like the t-ball rule book, geometry definitions must be clear. That is, every geometric term must have a definition that is descriptive enough to distinguish the term from every other term. Formulating a good definition for every word is difficult without some building box. Blocks. Suppose you are asked to f define point and define it as a spot. What about the word spot? A spot is a place. What about the word place? A place is an exact location. You see a diagram over here that kind of puts your words all ending up in a continuous circle. Trying to define the term, you might find the best description of an exact location to be a point. You have returned to the original word that we are, you are trying to define. This is circling back. It's called circularity. To avoid circularity, certain basic geometric terms are forced to be undefined. These terms are the building blocks of the defined terms. They provide an initial reference upon which other terms can be defined. In this book, following a tradition begun by the German mathematician David Hilbert about 100 years ago, we chose point, line, and plane as undefined terms. So the undefined terms in this book are point, line, and plane. So, as I said in the reading that I just did, that we use these undefined terms to, to define some basic words in our textbook that we're going to be using. The first word that we're going to define is a figure, and we're going to define that as a set of points. Next, we're going to define space as a set of all points. Collinear, three or more points that lie in the same line plane figure. It's a set of points that are all in one plane. And coplanar, four or more points that lie on the same plane. In this first example that I have here with this house, I'm going to ask you to identify collinear points and coplanar points. Finding co or understanding the definition of collinear and coplanar is essential for your success in this course. So let's start by looking at collinear. If we look at the definition again, it's three or more points that lie in the same line. So looking at the house, I'd like to, you to try and identify three or more points that are lying on the same line. Take a moment to do that. When you are finished, start the video again. As you can see, I've listed some points. E, I, D, they all lie in the same line. F, J, G also lie in the same line. Look down here below, B, K, L, and C all lie on the same line. Therefore, all 
three sets are considered to be collinear points. This, this is a set of collinear points, this is a set, and this is a set. The next thing I'd like you to do is find a set of coplanar points. Remember, a plane is a flat surface that has no boundaries. So thinking of a flat surface, I want you to think maybe about the sides of the, ho of the house and find the points that make up the side of that house. Stop the video and start it again when you are ready. As you can see here, I've written down some points that all are contained in the same plane. They are coplanar. Here is one side of the house, D, G, C, H. They're all in the same they're all in the same plane, therefore they are coplanar. Look here. I purposely chose some points that weren't your door or your boundaries. I kind of mixed it up a bit here. N and M and I and D. These are all on the same flat surface or the same plane, so therefore they are coplanar. When points are said to be collinear, as we see here for I, E, I, and D, we say that those points are one-dimensional. So when we think about dimension in geometry, something that is one-dimensional is a line because the figure in the figure all the points are collinear. But when we sp expand out and we have a plane, we say that plane is to be two-dimensional. And then when we expand beyond the plane and we have more points outside of the plane as we do in this house, this house in this example of something that is three-dimensional. We are going to just study, study the concept of dimension further in this chapter and in depth in chapter 9 in this course. I'd like you to take a moment now, stop the video, and look at the four examples of some different figures that I have here. Determine whether or not it's one, two, or three-dimensional. Start the video again when you are ready. As you can see here, this is an example of a plane. Planes are considered to be two-dimensional. This is a watermelon. It's well beyond a plane, so that is three-dimensional. Down here we have a line, and that is said to be one-dimensional. And the candle is beyond a plane, so it is three-dimensional. It has points outside of a single plane. This concludes Lesson 4.